So then, deadline day done. Summer transfer window is over. And Newcastle United should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. Because I'm going to go through everything in this video. I'm going to go through the pros and cons. Everything that we need to go through in this video about the transfer window. Because it has got me absolutely livid. It, it really, really has. And some of the some of the stuff that they're coming out with. Some of the excuses. I think it's absolutely bullshit. I think there's a lot of change in the squad that's needed. Players who need to come in. Players have to leave. And I'm gonna go through it all now because even even January last year we signed no one. The summer this year we didn't make a marquee signing. It's quite fucking scary. It really is. And you can't blame PSR. And I'm gonna go through this video. Well you can't blame PSR for some stuff, but you can't blame it in another sense, but we'll go through it all now and um yeah, let's have it. So if we go for the players who actually were signed for Newcastle United this season, so the first one was Lewis Hall. He signed because we had we had to sign him. I think there was a clause if we finished fourteenth or above, obviously we finished seventh. So Lewis Hall was always gonna sign. We all knew that. It was twenty eight million. We knew we had to sign Lewis Hall and that was a forgiven. That was in the contract, it was an obligation to buy if we reached this thing and we'd done that. So Lewis Hall was a forgiven. We knew he was gonna sign. We signed two goals goalkeepers, Flakademos, who will not play for Newcastle whatsoever this season, and that was due to the PSR stuff, we spent 20 odd million on him, which is fucking ridiculous, and then John Ruddy, I don't think John Ruddy's necessarily a, like, one of them signs where people are going on, oh it's a bad sign and this and that, I think it's a bit like what Scott Carson is at, um, at Man City, but can't sign two goalkeepers, and then not get rid of any, it, it, it makes no sense, like you, you keep Gillespie, you keep to Bravka, but then you've got now John Ruddy, Vlachodimos, and then Nick Pope, who's going to play every game this season. Why? Get them off the wage bill. Why do you think PSR is an issue? Why do you think we have issues of trying to sign players on loan, trying to sign players? We've got too many players on that wage bill, and obviously we'll go for all that in a second. Obviously, I understand the Vlachodimos deal. Um, but if you're going to sign Vlachodimos, he's probably just as, just as capable, if not better, than Martin Dubravka. So you've got to get rid of Martin Dubravka. The club have got to be way more, way more stubborn and way more strict with the, 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 the way they need to run the club. We've got players in this team that were in the club since 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. It's 2024. The takeover is coming up to... It's over three years. Wait, it'll be coming up three years in um, in October. That is scary. The fact that some of the players in the squad are still in the squad. It is really scary in my opinion, but the players who we signed, as I mentioned, the two goalkeepers, um, we knew we, we had to sign Lewis Hall. Lloyd Kelly on a free transfer. I think it's a good tra I think it is a good transfer, but we're not a team that should be signing free free signings as well marquee signing because it's quite scary. Lloyd Kelly's our marquee signing. That is scary. That is scary. You can see all the stuff about Lewis Hall, but we knew he was going to be signing for the club last season, so you can't really put him in this picture. He came out with this, the money that we spent in this window. Yes, but obviously we had money to spend elsewhere on a centre half that we couldn't get. Like Kenny, against Bournemouth away, didn't look great. Don't know if that's due to playing against his old team or not. I don't know. William Asula. Uh, right, I understand we have always needed a third striker. Always have. Always have, right? Ever since Isaac came in, we've had two strikers. Chris, it was either, when Isaac signed for Newcastle, it was Isaac, Chris Wood, Callum Wilson, right? And then Wilson was injured. And then Isaac got injured, so it was Chris Wood. And then Wilson came back and then went to the World Cup. And then we looked at, we looked at okay without Isaac for a bit. Chris Wood had run out alone and not enough for us, so that left Isaac come back from injury with Callum Wilson. Callum Wilson got injured, it was just Isaac. And then it, it was a mixture of the two. Isaac got a little bit of an injury. And then towards the end of the 2022 23 season, both then played the majority of the season and then got us Champions League football. Going into the season after, where we had Champions League football, we didn't sign a striker. We had just Wilson and just um, Isaac. Chris Wood got um, sort of nothing for us, I think, for 20 million or whatever. And last season we struggled. There was times last season where we didn't have a fit striker. Isaac and Wilson were both injured. So I think the first striker was always necessary for Newcastle United, but. William Asula, I will support the lad. He's still young, still got loads of time to develop. Will develop really well under Eddie Howe if Eddie Howe gets the time, which I need to go on to in a minute. Will he do? Will he do well this season? He probably won't get the game time in the first three games in the cup game. He hasn't played. I'm assuming he'll play against Wimbledon, but he's a player that's clearly not ready to play Premier League football. 
which is scary. So out of the out of the four signings that came in this summer, not including Lewis Hall, you've only got one star, which is Lloyd Kelly, and he doesn't even start in the team. That is it's scary. We haven't made a marquee signing. And then people going about, oh well you've got Tonali back. Why what if he didn't get banned Tonali? Then we wouldn't be going, oh well it's like a new signing because it, it, it feels like it because he's not played in, in ten months, but that's not the point. We we knew Tonali was coming back in August. So you can't really sit there, oh well it's, it's like a new signing, you can't say that, we knew he was coming back to the team so that doesn't really matter in my opinion, we knew he was coming back like the lowest Hall one, we knew we were going to sign him, we had to sign him, so it wasn't the case of like, if but or maybes, it was straight facts, so this summer we, we've signed four players who aren't getting who aren't going to get into the start 11, that's fucking scary. And a player we tried to get, who we didn't, who would have went into the start 11, was obviously um, Mark Gay. Crystal Palace um, absolutely played us off the park and which is the, the, the shit house we was ridiculous and fair play to Crystal Palace because we we haven't got the bottle to do what we what what we done we couldn't have done that to any, any other team um, Crystal Palace played us on strings and it was an absolute fucking joke of a transfer saga 25 days and then to get told oh we're not going to sign you 25 days you can sit there and go where the club tried so hard well you didn't try hard enough in my opinion and you dilly dallied you put all your eggs in one basket it's like on a fucking night out you see that fucking 10 10 stunner right and you're fucking on her but you fucking can't get her so you're putting all your eggs in one basket spending all your money at the bar and double bodies and that right and then you could have went fucking elsewhere it's literally the exact same situation you put all your eggs in one basket it hasn't worked and it's fucked you hour. can't get your leg out it's literally like that that's what's happened with Newcastle with Mark A, it is. It was. It, it was just. I didn't get it. We should have sat there and went. What, what do you want? Oh, we want sixty-five million. Reese, there's sixty-five million. Yes or no? Rather than going fifty-five, we'll put, push it to sixty with five million add-ons and and dilly dally like that. Sit and give the price of the want or give the price that you're happily to give Newcastle. If they say no move on how do you think other clubs do no other club in this transfer window spent 25 days trying to sign someone and the fact that crystal palace kept mark gay signed lacroix from wolfsburg and got trevor chalabar on loan and we signed fucking knee one it's actually mad and i do think center back is a, is a position where we had to sign currently right now right this second going into the game tomorrow we've got one center half one centre half, it was a natural centre half, and I wouldn't even say he is a centre half because he played with the majority of the time at Newcastle at fucking left back, which is Darren Byrne. Lloyd Kelly played left back a lot for Bournemouth and centre back, so he was a bit of two. Emil Cross played right back, centre back, played right back when Tri Trippier has been injured, played centre back when we needed him. We've got literally not one. In and out centre back, you've got Fabian Shaw, but he can't play at the model. So you've got not one centre back who's an in and out centre back who's played there for years. So why not go for someone on loan? Why? Why aren't we going for Trevor Chalabar? Why? It makes absolutely no sense, in my opinion. Speaking about obviously centre backs, one position I said from day one, one position I said we've needed the same since 2022. 2022. A right winger. We've looked okay in the in, in the games versus Nottingham Forest and Bournemouth towards the, the later stages of the game where we've had Barnes and Gordon. And then if you watch the documentary, Gordon was signed as a right winger. You can clearly see Barnes and Gordon both would prefer to play on the left. So we need that right winger. And did we get it? Did we fuck? Deadline day. Oh, Anthony Alanga. Oh, could be a good sign and would have took him. He's he's a, he's a quite good player. Not someone who's gonna set a world at night, but he's a he's an okay player. It would have been a deal of about thirty five million. Apparently, Forrest wanted a player. We could have just fucking sat there and give them Alan one or fucking anyone. Could have given Black Demos back, but no. I don't know about that. Do you? Apparently, it was all if but or maybe's, and it was never ever gonna happen when that comes out with six hours left of the deadline. So. That deal was never gonna happen, so you can't sit there and go, oh, you never know, never know. It was never gonna happen, lads, right? Just be a realist. So, obviously, we haven't signed enough. The right winger issue is still a problem at the club for the past two seasons, three seasons. The centre back is very much needed. Our squad is, 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 we've got players in positions where we've got a little bit of cover now, but fans are we're gonna get top four. We will be extremely lucky to have Eddie Howe at the end of the season in top eight. 
I, I really do believe that. Let's speak a little bit about Eddie Howe. We all know in his press conferences, he's a, he's a bit, I wouldn't say stale, he's a bit the harm sony the very sort of crisp in the water that's what he is right it, it does the job on a day where you feel like shit but y y you could go out there and get a bit better not as a mate manager in the sense i mean as i vote the words and, and how he speaks on his press conferences looking at the fact of eddie howe this season can i say him being newcastle manager at the end of the season where he, he's not had the tools to give with it's a bit like Rafa, when Rafa was here, didn't get the tools, didn't get the players he wanted, and ultimately left. I won't, I, I, I don't say Eddie Howe leaving, but I could see the club doing something ruthless this season. I can, I really can. I can see if the two are struggling in, in December, I can see Eddie Howe getting the sack. I really, really can. Fans might think, um, no, no, no way, no way. I generally do believe that. I feel like the club are too ruthless enough to not have a go at Dan, Dan, Dan Eels or um, Paul Mitchell. It all goes down to Eddie Howe and performances on the pitch. Every single team in this league has improved. Every single team from the newly promoted teams to from 17th to 1st apart from Newcastle United. Every single team in the league has improved. And you can sit and go, well, we've not got you playing football. That doesn't matter. That really, really doesn't matter. We've played against Southampton, Bournemouth and Nottingham Forest and we've struggled in every game. That's why you need signings, that's why you need some players, that's why you need some fucking top quality players who are going to play for this club. It is signed sealed. Obviously with PSR, and I forgot to mention before, obviously the sales of Minta and Elliot Anderson, two young stars. You can obviously see from the game versus Nottingham Forest, Elliot Anderson did not want to leave. He didn't. and I think everyone knows that. I think everyone gets that vibe. He didn't want to leave Newcastle United. So... There was that. Minter wanted to play Premier League football, never touched the ball for Newcastle, never went to the training ground, never even associated with the football club. And he left after his loan from Feyenoord to Brighton and his first game versus Everton looked absolutely sublime. I don't think we can, we can complain about PSR. The fact that we had bids last January, right, for Trippier, for Wilson, right? Rejected, rejected. Almoron, this summer, MLS rejected. You cannot complain about PSR if you're not going to sell the players who aren't going to improve the team. It is simple as that. You've had bids for Almoron, bids for Wilton, bids for Trippier in the past eight months, right? And you've rejected every single one. Newcastle need to be more of a selling club. We've got to be way more ruthless. We've let Harrison Ashby go out on loan. We've let Joe White go out on loan. And we've terminated the contract of Ryan Fraser who's went to Southampton on a free. We have got to be more ruthless. We've still got players like Isaac Hayden, who I think has been wrongly treated at the club. You've got players like Jamal Lewis. You've got um, Kual. You've got so many players in that squad now, right, who we've signed and played and who have been there before the takeover. Still at the club, still not going to get minutes, still on the wage bill. And you think why we can't sign players and why we struggle with financial fair play and why you struggle with PSR. That's the reason. You've got to be more ruthless. You've got to get rid of players. You've got five goalkeepers. You've got more goalkeepers than what you do attacking players at the football club. That is fucking scary. And it, it, it needs sorting out. I felt like I had to sit down. I was going to do it on Friday, but I thought, no, I let the transfer window settle. I'll wake up in the morning and it, it's still not happy. I'm, I'm not the happiest of bunnies, I'll tell you that. But Tottenham tomorrow, um, they've improved. They've signed some good players. Have we signed good players? No. It's going to be a. A tricky old day of St. James's tomorrow, um, I can say that, but make sure to leave a like button, subscribe to the channel, let me know if you agree or disagree with my thought.